Welcome to Group Talk, four shows, one podcast from the Small Group Network focusing on topics relevant to small group ministries. Whether you're in a church of 100 or 10,000, whether you're a volunteer or staff, we want to support, encourage, and equip you to lead well. So relax, listen, and enjoy Inside Saddleback with Steve Gleaton. Hey everyone, thank you so much for joining us today. Derek here along with Steve. Hey everybody. And we are talking about new wineskins in this episode. Steve, set this up for us. Yeah, it's, it's, I mean, a lot of this comes from the influence. Uh, I love how iron sharpens iron and uh, just uh, hanging out. I've had some time just to follow and read and uh, with John Cassetta, who's our worship uh, pastor uh, for our campus support team. Uh, and it's just got, it's got, there's just a great mantra that he's been uh, working on that I'm going to uh, piggyback off of. But yet, this is definitely, uh, and he would echo these same exact thoughts, but this is, this. it's just a difficult season. I think we're all, all willing to say it is a difficult season. And, you know, normally when we're going to talk about, you know, what's that trending topic, which we're, we're normally doing in the fourth block, but right now we're, we're pulling it out in the first block and we're actually threading it throughout the, the whole whole show. But along with that, you need to know that we're going to conclude with the, still the trending topic, but add just a little bit of an exclamation point to it so you know what's going on. But there's no question about it. We have a nation divided. We have racism that is exposed and rooted out. We have self-centered leadership no longer tolerating uh, what's going on, a staggering count of loss. In the U.S. alone, 154,000 so far, and in the world, 680,000. I mean, to me, in my mind, that approach is genocide that is happening, uh, again, from, you know, wherever, however you figure all that out. The point is, is that the death rate is so staggering, we can't even wrap our heads around it. And in this unprecedented season, one of the things that just grieves me, and I hear this from small group pastors and churches and point leaders, you know, working on their small group is, is, you know, they're always asking this familiar phrase, and that is, you know, I just can't wait till we can get back to what it was before. And can I just say to everyone out there, if, if no one's told you, let me tell you, there is no going back to before. It is a new normal, and it is going to be a very different normal, which is why we wanted to focus this whole show on new wineskins. You see, we serve a God who is in the business of new. New life, new mercies, new beginnings, new wineskins. So why on earth are we longing for the ways of the past of how we did temple courts and house to house? Why are we aching to go back to what it was? You know, I get it. I miss it too. My mojo has been messed up a ton. And, you know, it's just, it's impacting me just as much as it's impacting you. But if we go back to anything, can we just say right now, may it be re- a return to our call, which is helping people see Jesus, a return to the commitment to seek him first, not how we used to do temple courts and house to house, but a returning to prayer with passion and expectation, giving generously, and it's a return to Jesus and how he is orchestrating his will to be done on this planet, which is that everyone should know him and see him as Lord and Savior. You see, our loyalties to the programs and the performances is showing because we are trying to shoehorn in what is given to us and putting it back in that old wineskins. And it's just going to burst. Our reluctance to pry off our fingers from the old wineskins is apparent and it's troubling. So can we, can we just can we put a pause? Can we say, hey, let's let's just lay it on the altar and let's ask God to burn away all the stuff that we keep hanging on to so his new path for the new future can be seen. So if the better part of our time is thinking about how to replicate the past or trying to do a, hey, this is how we're going to, uh, you know, make it work in phase one or phase two, and, and it's, just a, it's, it's just putting lipstick on a pig. You know, we might be missing something, something fresh, something richer, something deeper. And could it be that God is calling us to deeper? And actually, you know, can I can I just say we already know the answer to that question? But he is calling us to something deeper. So let's start with us. Let's start asking better questions. What is the new expression 
for this season and the next? What needs to be celebrated for what it was and just count that in our past and start leaning towards the new that God has us, the new leaders, the new, the new things that we will do. Isaiah 43, I love this at verse 19. It says, I am doing new things now spring forth. Do not you perceive it? I will make a way in the wilderness and rivers in the desert. So ask yourself this question. What if we never go back? What if today is what we have for the future? Now, I don't think it's going to be that way. But if you ask yourself that question, we're not going to keep doing what we're doing. So I'm claiming that verse for such a time as this. And I'm trusting what is next is better. God only has for us what is better. So let's connect to each other in the new and see what God's going to do. Because this is not figured out yet. It will take all of us working together and networking together and sharing the ideas so that we can figure out what God has for us. Boom. Wow. You came out with both barrels blazing, brother. I know. It's just, you know, I've been pent up and I, and I just need to yell. <laughs> what an opening monologue. I hope you guys have your seatbelts buckled because if that was the opening, this is going to be a great show. So let's jump into our first piece of the Inside Saddleback uh, episode show, which is the Saddleback Scoop. This is all about kind of what's happening in the Saddleback world. So Steve, take us into that. Yeah. Uh, two things I just want to hit on, and we've touched on them before, um, but it, it is, and this is us trying to figure out, okay, how are we getting back to those to those new wineskins while helping nursing people, uh, not nursing people like in nursing homes, but, you know, help guiding people along to whatever the new is going to be. So we're still focusing on mobilizing more than we are gathering. And I know everyone's trying to ask the question, you know, how are you? I see this all the time on our Facebook group, you know, how are you doing this and how are you doing that? And you can see in our show notes uh, a, uh, an email that I sent out to all of our group leaders uh, and hosts just on on what, you know, we're, we're comfortable with. But more excitingly is we are really trying to position our groups on not being gathering centers, but being mobilizing centers. We're doing the same thing with weekend services. And uh, when you look at the latest stats from Saddleback, uh, we just found this out that in Orange County, 3.2 million people, we are now the largest food distributor in Orange County. Um, and uh, the thing I love about that is is not the number one stat, although I'm competitive and I and I do like that. Uh, and and the school that I love is you know it has the number one recruiting class in football. And uh, hashtag roll the tide will not prevail. Uh, but uh, but what I'm trying to say is that what excites me about that is that the church is returning for what it should be known for. You know, there's a survey that was put out, and they were asking people who don't believe in Christ. And they were asking them, what word would you associate with Christians or Christ followers as you know them? And the survey came out with uh, a, com a comprising, of, this was the main theme, but it was judgmentalism. That we were judgmental. That's the first word that they could think of when they're trying to describe Christians. And the thing that uh, I'm just excited about in this particular area is that we're seeing where are the pain points in your community, and the church should address the pain points. We're going to talk about a great quote uh, in the in the trending uh, topic, but uh, section. But the thing that's, uh, that I love about this is we are we are running to the problem. We're not running away from the problem. And when it when it when we look at the uh, food issue that the pandemic has caused, we're running towards it. When we talk about the racism issue and protest, we're running to it. When we're talking uh, about the politics, we're we're just burying our head. No, I'm, you know, no, we're, we're helping Run. people. We're helping people focus on Jesus, not on on politics. If if politics and laws were going to change people, then we would all gone into that. But we know that pastors change people's hearts through Jesus. Not not politics, um, but just some of the fun stats, and and these are last week's stats. Uh, you know, Derek and I are here on a on a beautiful early start to the week, um, but it eighty eight thousand four hundred and sixty four people in the field 
have accepted Christ. So in the communities of where we have been, and actually I know that's old because, you know, uh, at the at one of them that we were at, they uh, had 200, I think, 54 people accept Christ uh, last Thursday. So, you know, these, these stats are out of date. But the thing that I'm excited about is 14,357. And again, why we measure only in the field right now, but that's how many people accepting. I mean, that's how many people are volunteering in the field. And, uh, you know, generally most of our small groups are going to be working on the back end, uh, preparing all the food for, for people. Obviously, we have groups that are working on the front end. But the, the point is that I'm trying to say is that in our Saddleback Scoop piece is that we are pushing towards saying food isn't enough. We're going into the fall and schools are closing and they're not opening up. How do we come along teachers? How do we come along school representatives? How do we come along families and be the church? I mean, right now they're not asking, you know, uh, you know when, does the, when does small group meet it? Or when does the church service start, you know, on the weekends? They're saying, how am I taking care of my family? The felt needs are in front of them. And I give you the salvation stat because if I said, hey, if in the last 19 weeks, 8,500 people could somehow find Jesus that didn't do it on the weekend, would you would you be happy with that? Every one of us would say we would be more than happy with that. So it's it's an exciting piece. Do you want to Yeah, jump and I, I'm excited about, you know, because we've been mobilizing, like you're saying, Steve, and we're going out and we've become the largest food distributor in Orange County. And we're partnering with schools to feed people. Um, you know, with the fall, we've learned in California schools are shut down. So it's going to be this huge need. And I believe because we've met that need, right, in serving people food and in partnering with these school districts, now we're really going to be able to come alongside of them, like you're saying, and say, hey, how can we serve you when it comes to uh, serving the schools and the teachers and all the parents during this crisis of kids not going to school. Yeah, and it and it's just it's uh, they they are they are hemorrhaging pain points that the church needs to rise up to. Uh, the other thing I would just say that's a, a highlight that we've been working on since the last time Derek and I were were chatting with you was uh, we're not letting this racism thing go. Um, you know, Orange County, uh, stats wise, I think it's one and a half percent are African American. And, and it could be very easy for us to say, you know, it's, it's not in our neighborhood. We don't need to deal with it. But just the opposite, uh, we all need to deal with it. And the thing that I love is that uh, as we are working with our staff and uh, starting to work with our congregation, it's, it's all on this next new wineskin of how to be, you know, anti racist. And I just want to read you six degrees of racism, because I think, uh, you know, Derek and I, uh, we're both pasty white. We both get onto the, the <laughs> beach over the weekend and we we burn ourselves. I mean, I got burn marks on me right now from, uh, you know, uh, being at Huntington Beach. And I think on Sunday, then I was uh, down by T Street. Uh, but it was, um, you know, there's it could be very easy because the news isn't giving attention to it. And the news only gives attention to it. When it serves, you know, ratings and people watching the news, they're not caring about culture or this would have been taken care of, you know, over 200 years ago uh, when we founded our government. Um, but listen to these six levels and I'll read them and then I'll describe them. But one level is racism. Another level is bigot. Another one is avoider, then insensitive, then apathetic, then sensitive and then reconciler. And if I were to ask you just based on those words, which one would you say? And uh, I just want to kind of go through it because I think all of us want to think the best of ourselves and say, yeah, well, we're definitely a reconciler. And and we all deal with different degrees of prejudicism. I've traveled the world uh, and there's always uh, bigotry uh, at any place you're on the planet to a people group, to another people group uh, or a socio status to another socio status. But uh, for the sake of this conversation, uh, racism is someone who hates, bullies, and discriminates. A bigot belittles and believes stereotypes. And I, and I would probably say I'm, I'm probably hopeful that our church is not in those first two categories. Uh, but as we, as we go through these six degrees, I think we start to hit on points that, you know, even in your church, you may be wanting to think through. But one is an avoider, and that's uncomfortable around other races. So you just avoid it. Uh, they say the the highest desegregation moment in America is always Sunday morning at nine and eleven, and it's you know there's reasons. 
uh, insensitivity. Uh, it, that means you're ignorant to what hurts. Uh, Derek and I were talking about uh, on the show just some some comments that were made uh, by different people, and it's just that they don't know. They don't know what they don't know, and so they are insensitive, uh, apathetic. Uh, you know, but you don't care. That's that is you know, that's probably a bigger chunk of us. And then sensitive, we're aware, uh, and we're kind, and we're inclusive, but that's where we want to keep it at. But where we're trying to get our church uh, staff to, and then our church family to, and hopefully to impact Orange County, is to be active bridge builders. And this will, for us, transcend other races, because like I said, in our stats, you know, one and a half percent is African American, but you start with that and then you move move it from there. The thing that I like is when you, when you start to get closer to people, proximity always breeds empathy. You know, when I found out our son was a special needs kid and I'm around other families that have special needs kids, because I've had close proximity to that, I have a whole different empathy than before we knew we had one. And so, uh, so it's that, that piece right there. And I love it as, you, as you're wrestling with this topic and you're thinking through your own small group ministry. Here's what I love. I love Matthew 23, 26. It says, you blind Pharisees, first wash the inside of the cup and the dish, and then the outside will become clean too. And it just starts at home. It starts in your family unit house. It starts with your staff and your influence, and then it goes back out. And what I'm not talking about here, I'm not talking about a melting pot where we all become one. Uh, oftentimes, major metropolitan areas like Los Angeles, our whole basin can be, because ah, it's just a melting pot. You know, we all blend into one. But think of it more in the imagery of like a mosaic where we all have our distinct contributions. But when you put us all together, you get a beautiful picture of, for the biblical good. So a little bit of a long tyrant on uh, the Saddleback Scoop, uh, but uh, what can I say, Derek? You know, it's it's been a month. I mean, I got to cram so much in a month into a show. You are ready to go. I mean, we had the most epic opening monologue and then one of the most epic Saddleback Scoops. Now onto our network nugget, and this is what's happening in the SGN world. This is the latest news in the small group network, and so I'll start out, Steve. Um, if you haven't heard, uh, we had a huge win recently. In the last month, we launched our first ever online training course called Align, Learning Small Group Ministry Essentials, and we've had, man, uh, more and more people purchasing this course and rolling, and we're hearing testimonies come through. And and that for Steve and I is just the most rewarding part is to hear how uh, Align is encouraging and equipping fellow small group point people. So I wanted to read a quick testimony from somebody who just finished the course. His name is uh, Billy, and he uh, Billy Haskins from Plainfield, Indiana. And Billy says this, quote, I just completed the Align online course. It was very inspiring and practical at the same time. I cannot wait to begin implementing some of the content here at our church. Billy, if you're listening, thanks so much for sending that in. That pumps us up. And so if you haven't heard about Align, we would encourage you to go to smallgroupnetwork.com forward slash Align and check it out, learn more. And if you feel to uh, enroll, but that has been a big new wineskin for us, right? Yeah. I mean, the, the courses were uh, back when we did the 12, we were trying to do a small group conference and try to take all the components that were happening in a physical confer- conference and and boil that down into uh, you know the the virtual world and when we did the twelve some seven years ago or something like that had great numbers but just didn't have the byproduct we were looking for and so I've been really excited about this new wine skin and then because of the network because of the beauty of the network somebody in the network you know down in um, uh, Australia was talking to me and just saying hey I'd like to do this as a cohort and I want to get some structure around it. And it's been beautiful because they got 33 churches going through a line in Australia and maybe more by this time or when the show airs. And then over in South Africa, we're doing the same type of thing uh, down down in the uh, lower point of South Africa. So it's just exciting to see some denominations picking up. And so we thought it was a new wine skin and then someone comes along and develops a new wine skin. <laughs> but, you know, uh, and then, you know, if you haven't realized over the last 19 weeks, Derek and his team have been busy, uh, you know, just doing beyond what we normally do. But on top of that, creating 
other new wineskin stuff. Derek, I mean, you shared some stats with me over the weekend. Just give us a handful of them because he sent me a list of 25 things. I'm like going, <laughs> let's pare that back a little bit. Yeah, we've had so many great wins uh, since really COVID started. Uh, we've really published a record number or created uh, resources for small group point po- people in the last five months. Did you say poopy? <laughs> point people. <laughs> we uh, had approximately um, 50 specialized COVID resources alone. Uh, and you can go to smallgroupnetwork.com forward slash COVID to see all those, enjoy those. So that's been a big win. Just putting out a ton of resources. And then, uh, as some of you may have heard, our Facebook group has just blown up in a good way, surpassing 5,000 members. And it's just so uh, continually exciting to see all the interaction going on in there. If you're on Facebook and you're not part of that group, search uh, for Small Group Network and join. And then, obviously, this podcast has gone from monthly to literally weekly. We've launched three new shows this year. And again, if you're just new to this show, if you're jumping on, listen every week and set your uh, alarm for Wednesday morning because that's when it's released every week. And so obviously we got this show, which is the first week of the month, Inside Saddleback with Steve, the Money Gladen. And then we've got uh, Here to There with Carolyn Takeda. That's the second week. We got Leadership Journey with Bill Search. Uh, That's the third week. And then we've got Reading Lens with... Nick Lindsay. And that's the fourth week. And so uh, it was, I don't know about you, Steve, it was so fun to listen to all of their inaugural shows since we started this lineup, right? Yeah. I mean, I got to confess, I mean, uh, Carolyn's been actually anchoring this for 12 or 15 years. And and then I kind of jumped on uh, to to her coattails and her wins. Uh, But through the the ground that she has plowed, it it has been fun. Both Bill and Nick uh, came out with just amazing shows. Encourage you to listen to both of them. Uh, you know, it, it hasn't been perfect. We've had some bumps along the way. If you listen, you'll see some of them. Uh, but I love uh, one of the shows gives a free giveaway away. And I think that's the best part, Derek. We got to start <laughs> ponying. Loosen up. Don't worry about getting money. Let's let's give some money. So we'll start giving out money on this show to boost our stats yeah, uh, against go. the others. But hey, shout out to Jason, our producer, for making all of this happen uh, so well as well. Couldn't do it without him. Another big win is our huddles. We're seeing huddles pop up all over. Uh, we have, we're, Getting close to 300 total huddles worldwide. That's exciting. Huddles are like small groups for small group point people. Of course, we launched again uh, our new online training course, Align. And the cool thing is we are simultaneously, Steve, right now building multiple new courses. Yeah, I think we're we're in post-production for the Accelerate course. And then what are the two new ones? Because I think they're going into filming this week. Yeah, we've got one coming up with online, uh, small group online with Jay Cranda. And then we're going to do one on uh, small groups for kids. So big stuff coming. Yeah, Liza Gann is going to be heading that one up. And then uh, right on their uh, code heels, we have uh, three that are coming out with uh, student small groups and then uh, a leadership track development one for you. And then also we, we have uh, how to do an intern program, which is uh, something where you give back to those. I remember my first internship program I did, and uh, I, I should say uh, it was probably more like slave labor. And what I love about <laughs> uh, this is uh, the course will help you make it a, as beneficial for you as it will be for them. And one more quick stat is... You know, a lot of our physical events got put on hold with COVID, but we are coming out in faith with a bang in 2021, and we are adding a slew of uh, Accelerate physical events and others. So shout out to Daniel, Andrea, and the team on that. Steve, I could go on forever, but that is some of our wins. You, you have gone on forever, but uh, but I'll go on. I just got to just bring some clarity to that because on the physical events, we have both Align physically coming out in three cities in 21, and we have Accelerate coming to 11 cities wow. uh, in uh, 21. So uh, we're just praying COVID or no COVID, uh, we'll mask up, wash up, and uh, sterilize ourselves. You're going to be flying all over. Yeah, not me. I love our trainers. And the great thanks to Kristen and Reed and Dave and uh, Laura and others who are certified trainers that will be out on the road and along with me. Here we go. So that was our network nugget on to our leadership learning for this amazing episode. Yeah. And I, I think on this one, it'd be, you know, a, part of our, um, as you're thinking through the new wineskins, we got a great um show note piece for you that I'll, I'll highlight here in just a second. But, uh, you know, again, this is where the network is so beautiful. Chet uh, Glukowski, uh Chet is an amazing writer. 
just doing all kinds of things. And, and uh, he sent me some stuff. And one of the things I loved, and it's kind of like in the theming of how do you lead with hope? And as you're trying to get to a new wine scene, you've got to be thinking through these pieces. And, you know, how we move forward obviously depends on God and understanding that our hope is in the Lord. Uh, a couple of great verses that he sent along, Psalm 33, 20, and it says, we wait in hope for the Lord. He is our help and our shield. And it's a simple one-line verse, but the, the piece that he's a help and a shield come into so many different things because we're thinking just like you, what are these new wineskins and how are we falling into them and developing into them? And, and part of it is, you know, we're seeing that we're mobilizing our groups. We're saying, hey, don't meet weekly anymore. Meet every other week. And then on the off weeks, we're trying to, you know, we're trying to make a thrust with the, the other purposes that we focus on. But, you know, God is going to be our help and our shield while we're figuring this out. Jeremiah 14, 22, do any of the worthless idols of the nations bring us rain? Does the stock market bring us rain to help us out? I don't think so. Uh, do the skies themselves send down showers? No, it is you, Lord our God. Therefore, our hope is in you, for you are the one who does all this. And to me, this verse just screams out, trust, trust trust. Now, in order for people to hear this message of hope, God wants to use uh, for his leaders to speak, you know, his word in, in a way to deliver the message of hope, hope to this, this world, is that we've got to be able to think through, okay, how are we going to lead? How are we going to do all this? And, you know, part of it, especially as we're in this COVID zone, you, you kind of toggle between, you know, being an enforcer, being an informer, but hopefully being an infirmer, which brings the hope piece. Now, the attached article in the show notes is from the McKinsey Company. Uh, it's, it's, it's an amazing article, and I would just encourage you to, to go into our show notes and read it because there's a lot of great pieces uh, that come from this. And the title of the article is, you know, From a Room Called Fear to a Room Called Hope. And let me tee this up for you uh, where the McKinsey Group is, is taking this. And they say, you know, leadership, you know, an agenda for leadership in troubled times. And leaders can make a difference through personal accountability, caring, and onboarding of all their people. And I just want to read you just the uh, opening paragraph just to, just to dive you into this. It says, leadership during trying times requires building cultural and psychological protections for employees. Now, obviously, this is a secular uh, driven company, so but it's so applicable to the church world. Uh, one key, one key for creating such safeguards is holding oneself personally accountable for the decisions, others' well-being, and organizational performance. Another is using compassionate words and deeds to dampen the damage inflicted by the crisis at the hand and to conserve fuel and direct the willpower and energy of people you depend on and who depend on you. Leaders who do these things will create passageways that help people travel from a room called fear to a room called hope. Skilled leaders also sustain that hope by building cultures that are flexible, celebrate individuality, and that enable employees to be their best selves at work. How do you lead through the pandemic? And, um, and I'll just give you another exercise that's in the show notes. But the McKinsey Group on, on, their, on their piece will walk you through some steps. And then another thing I want to tag on to you is, you know, how do you lead through a pandemic? And part of this, there's an exercise you can even do. Read the McKinsey article first and then get together with your people and say, what attributes are needed to be able to lead like the McKinsey group was giving us. And so part of what we did is we did an exercise too with our elders and our campus pastors. And in the show notes, you're going to see a list of uh, attributes that we came up with. And before you go look at the list in the show notes, I'd encourage you, go, do this exercise with your people and help them to take the best of what the secular world was giving to us and then help pull it into helping each one of us see how does that mesh with God's word and the attributes that we need there. So check out the show notes for both the article and for uh, our list that we came up with in just about a handful of minutes.
That was a great leadership learning. And like you said, that totally applies to the church in every way. So check that out in the show notes. All right. And now on to our trending topic for this show. Steve, take it away. Yeah. A, a quote that I want to share with you. Uh, I was on a Zoom uh, call. Like, who isn't on a Zoom call? Uh, but it was uh, Lifeway did it with influential churches uh, across the country. And uh, shout out to Chris Surratt. Thanks for pulling that together. I, I I was taking notes feverishly um, through the hour that we were together, um, but I forget who gave me uh, th- who gave this quote. It was also in the in the chat section. Um, I think it was me. Uh, you know, I'm, I'm not so sure about that, but uh, we could go with that. I think it's either uh, Bill Willits or uh, Heather Zempel uh, was talking about this. But it's from On the Verge with Alan Hirsch, and it and uh, it's a great quote. And and it's actually it's it's as I was reading it, I was like going, oh Lord, I want this to be my prayer. I want this to be who I want to gravitate towards this. And it says, if you really want to see innovation happen, and this is where this whole wineskins we're talking about, find a crisis. Crisis? How about a crisis? You're uh, really getting spiritual. I know it is. It is. Uh, it is in. Oh, man. It's okay. I'm, I'm fallible. Let me try this quote again. Everyone knows I can't read. If you really want to see innovation happen, find a crisis. It is in the middle of a crisis that we come to the realization that an end is near or a new future is born. On the verge of a great crisis, we are also on the verge of the greatest moment. And that's the moment we must decide, innovate or die. And, you know, when I was down at uh, T Street, uh, I was at one of the shopping malls near there, and we were just talking about restaurants in California. The ones who are setting up outdoor seating because we shut everything down inside, they're going to survive. They're innovating and they're redoing. And I sat on a fold-out table uh, in folding chairs, which you never would normally do in a restaurant. But they were innovating and they were, and they were adapting and, and meeting the culture where, where it was at. And there's a fine line between trying to stuff the old back into the new that we were talking about in the show, but also taking a pause and saying, what's the major thing that we work on? What is it in discipleship? We're trying to disciple discipleship and disciple making of people, not only to learn about God, but to do what God wants us to do. First Corinthians 13, we can say, I can fathom all the knowledge of the world, but if I have not love, I'm nothing. And so part of what you got to realize that all the, all the knowledge of the world is all the biblical knowledge too. And part of this new wineskin is forcing our people to decide, do you want to sit in your living room and just keep learning? Or do you want to use that time and get out there and do what's needed most in a crisis? And I love this quote um, from Alan because it really resonated with me as we're trying to say, what are these new wineskins that we're praying about and we're seeking and we're hoping to find? We, I think we think we found some parts of it in the food distribution, but we still have a bunch more coming in the fall. You see, principles always stay with us, but the methodologies will always change. And this whole podcast has been on the new wineskins. So instead of being worried about when the community is coming back together again, when are we getting into our living room? Hey, how about if we worry about getting mobilized to the community where the pain points are and the salvations are just waiting to happen. We've pr- proven that over 8,500 times. Push the, we're, like I said, we're pushing our communities, our small groups to, uh, you know, still want them to do Zoom. And if you want to meet outside, go ahead. But we have an opportunity where we need help in ministering to people, will you jump on board with us? You know, in my quiet time, I've been in the book of Hebrews, And it's a book of encouragement for those who are missing the old way of life. And you start to hear it rumbling all through uh, Hebrews. And that what they have been given up, what they've given up for this new life in Jesus, they're really questioning now is, is it worth it? You know, it wasn't perfect and and it had a bunch of struggles. And and if you remember, this is persecution type struggles. So this this wasn't COVID, although I know we, we feel like it's persecution. Uh, to stay at home, but, you know, they were having people actually come into their homes and kill them. Um, And their struggles were becoming the realities of life. 
And it, it's like, you know, the honeymoon's over. And that's that's what we're all experiencing. We adapted really well, you know, in those first couple of months of COVID, just like going, oh, it's going to be over soon. But boy, did we do a great job. Well, now that it's lingering on, you know, now the now the reality starts to set in. And we have to decide where is our mindset going to be? And that's why this theme of, you know, keep running with endurance that Hebrews is talking about. I'm trying to, you know, pepper into our staff because we have got to be the ones that drive the process to these new wineskins. You know, we got to keep remembering how can we be what we believe, trusting the truth of God in my life and remembering what he's done. And I just look back on what the Small Group Network has done and helped taught me as we've been working through some of these. It it is this, you know, when I look back on it, it's dare not to compare. Don't compare yourselves, but dare to mature your people into new wineskins. And in looking back, here's what I've seen. Success is the accumulation of a lot of failures that leads to innovation, which are our new wineskins. So go out and fail a bunch, throw it out to the network, and you can tell us your failures. Misery loves company. But more importantly, tell us your successes so we can all discover the new wineskins together. That was awesome. I love that quote, Steve, that you just said, success, help me out, is the accumulation of many failures. Yeah. Success is the accumulation. Well, it was not a quote. It was a, just a sentence. But oh, wow. I'll, I'll take, I know. You're shocked that can I can I think like that. Can, that I can think like that, of course. Yeah, but success is the accumulation of a lot of failures that leads to innovation, which are our new wineskins we've been talking about. Wow. It almost feels like maybe you were practicing your next book or something. Yeah, that was so great. I, I just getting ready to, you know, lift the glass up and <laughs> toast you. Yeah. We had to do something with the old wine. So it's like, hey, don't pour it down the drain. No, that was a great trending topic, and I hope that really encouraged everybody. Thank you so much for listening, and we want to remind you, go to smallgroupnetwork.com forward slash COVID and check out all of our slew of resources created just for you, to encourage you, to equip you. Know that we love you, we are praying for you, we are here for you, and we will see you next time. See you later. Bye. Hey, Small Group Network family, Jason Banzoff here, Group Talk producer and Small Group Network creative arts director. We really hope you enjoy this episode of Inside Saddleback with Steve Gladen. Now, before we go, let's talk about the newsletter. Are you subscribed to the Small Group Network monthly e-newsletter? From our latest articles, videos, and podcasts, to our upcoming events, to our new Huddle Conversation Starter, this dynamic resource is delivered directly to your inbox each month. Join the 20,000 other Small Group Point people who have subscribed by visiting smallgroupnetwork.com. Scroll down to the button and click the blue subscribe button today. And thank you for listening to Group Talk. We invite you to subscribe to our podcast through iTunes and get new episodes downloaded automatically. Also, if you enjoy this program, please take a few minutes to give us a positive rating on iTunes so that other small group point people can find us more easily. We encourage you to visit our website, smallgroupnetwork.com, to access our library of free resources, connect to a huddle with other small group ministry leaders in your area, read our blog articles, or join us on our Facebook group. Don't forget to use the hashtag SGNet when engaging with your social media channels. Thank you for your support.